Hey, before we start this episode, I just want to thank everybody who downloads and listens to my show every week, twice a week. I have to assume you're enjoying it. If you are, I would appreciate a review. If wherever you get your podcast, if there is a place there to review or rate, heck, just rate it. That's easy. Boom. Click a rating. That would be a big thing for me. The more people that know about this show, the more people can enjoy it, just like you. So spread the word, Thunderbird. That's my call to action. Thank you. And now on with the show. The following podcast is going to contain spoilers along with me, just a regular guy, talking about all the things I love, such as comics, movies, television, music, and books. So yeah, proceed at your own risk. Welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy. I'm your host, Steven, and as I sit in my car, surrounded by people who are all doing the same thing, we're all dealing with a global pandemic right now, folks. It's the one thing that everyone in the world is dealing with at the exact same time. We're all dealing with it. Black, white, gay, straight, man, woman, old, young, we're all dealing with it. It doesn't matter who you are, Democrat, Republican, it's going to affect you. I'm not going to talk about it too much here because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I do hope that you're all being safe. If you don't have to go anywhere, don't go anywhere. If you don't have to be around people, don't be around people. If you're in that age group that is low risk for catching this thing, that doesn't mean that you can't carry it to others. So let's just be safe, let's be smart, and let's try to hang out in this world a little bit longer and read comic books and stuff. Speaking of comic books, hey, if you're home not doing anything and you're listening to this podcast, let's talk about a comic book, shall we? Let's go back to 1997. DC Comics, major bummer, issue number one. This sucker sold for $2.50. It was written by John Arcudi with pencils by Doug Monkey, inks by Tom Nguyen. Colors by Carla Fini and Letters by Willie Schubert. Now, this is one of those books that I just kind of stumbled on. 97, I don't, I feel like I stumbled on this when I was working at a comic book store. I've, I've worked at one comic book store in my life. It was during the 90s. And honestly, I must have been working there in 97 because I feel like I just, this is one of those books that I was opening up a box because I was the guy, I worked a third shift job. So I would get off of my, my main job at 7.30 in the morning. I'd go to the comic book store on Tuesdays, whenever, whatever day of the week new comics came out back then. I want to say it was Tuesdays. But I'd leave the night job. I'd go somewhere and get a bit of breakfast. And then I would go to the comic book store. I would go inside and I would wait for the UPS dude to show up with our new comics that day. Because I only opened on, on new comic book day. And then I would take those books and I would sort them and I'd put them in people's pull bins and all that good stuff and put them up on the shelves. And one of those weeks, I run across this book called Major Bummer. And right away, the cover just stood out to me because it was a most excellently created, artistically beautiful cover created by Doug Monkey. And I thought I'd give the book a try. And I read through the first issue and just kind of fell in love with it. But I don't honestly remember ever finishing the series. I know it only got 15 issues. And I know that that was it, but I don't think it was only planned for 15 issues. I feel like I read somewhere that it did get canceled due to low sales. So I don't know if they ever wrapped anything up. I feel like maybe it was not long after that when I stopped reading comics, when it, when it finally dawned on me that I can't really afford them. But I ran across through Comixology this past weekend, all 15 issues collected in a trade and it was on sale on Comixology and I could not pass it up. And I sat down and I read issue number one. Now, this book tells the tale of Lou Martin, who is a slacker. He's your typical 90s slacker. He wears ripped up jeans. He wears just your basic white t-shirt. He can't even be bothered to put on something stylish. You know, a t-shirt with a logo on it. It's just your plain white t-shirt. He cares more about hanging out at home, playing video games, 
than going out and doing stuff. And he gets superpowers. That's what this book is about. So let's just talk about issue number one. We start out with our main character, Lou Martin. He's outside doing something in his car. Marnie, who we'll later learn is Lou's girlfriend, I believe. I don't, I feel like she's Lou's, she's either his girlfriend or she just lives in one of the apartments in the complex that he lives at. But he's, he's digging around in his car and she's asking him, you know, what, 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 what are you doing, Lou? And he says he's, he's, he's taking the speakers out of his car. She's going camping with friends. He says, while you're off camping, I'm going to take these speakers and I'm going to create a surround sound system for my Nintendo. And she just, she can't quite understand why somebody would do that. Why somebody would go through all that work and remove the speakers from their own car just to have better sound on their video games. And so she leaves and he goes, he goes into the house. She tells him before she leaves, she says, hey, there's a, a package came for you. I left it by your door. And so as he's heading into the house with the car stereo speakers, he finds, he sees the package and he looks at it and he kind of goes, huh, they put my last name first. That's weird. And he throws the box onto the couch and he ignores it. So he sits down, he's playing video games and eventually he gets tired of playing video games and then he's watching movies and then he's getting tired of watching movies. So he decides to go to, to, go to sleep. He's just going to crash there on the couch. He can't even bother to go to his own bed if he even has a bed. And as he's stretching out on the couch, he encounters this package that he tossed there just hours before. So curious, he opens it up. There's something inside. It's glowing, and then everything goes black. We go from there to him laying on the couch, waking up from a deep sleep, and he looks completely different. He's still wearing the torn-up jeans. He's still wearing the white T-shirt, but he's like twice the size now. He's this giant, huge, muscly dude. He's gone from maybe 5'10 to 6'5" maybe even 6'6". Six, six. He's gone from maybe 110 pounds to like 250. He's just this huge dude. He wakes up, he yawns, he stretches. He's feeling a little confused. He's feeling a little weird, but he glances at the clock and he sees that it's Monday morning and that it's 10 a.m. Well, first of all, he can't believe he slept through the entire weekend. And then he realizes he was supposed to open the shop and the shop opens at 10 a.m. Holy crap, he's going to be late. And he basically just bolts out of the house, straight from the couch out the door. He gets to the shop. He works at a place called Kathy's Video Repair. He's sitting there at this bench, and he's repairing a VCR. And he's just, he's kind of out of it. He doesn't really quite understand. He feels, he feels different. He thinks he's hungover. He thinks he's some, he doesn't remember getting drunk or taking anything at some point. He remembers playing the video games. But obviously something happened to him. He feels hungover. He, he mentions to himself that the tools in his hands feel smaller. His hands feel bigger. And all these thoughts are just running through his head. He's not really paying attention to what he's doing as he's repairing, quote unquote, repairing a VCR. And then he just happens to look down at the VCR and he sees that he's not actually repairing a VCR. He's taken all the VCR parts and whatnot, and he's created some kind of big laser gun. That's the moment when the boss comes in, Mr. Kathy. And he's carrying a bunch of boxes. He comes in through the front door and he's telling Lou, he goes, you're fired, Lou. You're fired. I know you were late this morning because I kept calling. I kept calling the shop until a quarter after 10 and nobody picked up. That means you were late again. And it was your job to open. You're fired. And that's the moment that he takes a peek through the boxes at Lou and freaks out because in, in his mind, that's not Lou. That guy's like twice Lou's size. He's just huge freaking ripped muscly dude and so lou leaves and he's carrying his big laser gun and as he's walking by this store there's a, there's a video camera projecting whoever's walking by on the street projecting it onto a tv screen in the window and that's when he notices himself for the first time and he's like what that that's me nah can't be me now in the meantime we meet this gang we don't know if they're criminals or not they seem to be they're, they're a bit weird. They're very alternative type people. One of them is a woman named Bridget, and she's sitting on, I believe it's like a moped or something, and she tells one of the guys, Nunzio, to go get her some corn nuts. And he gets a little attitude. He's like, I'm sick of your crap, lady. Just because you want corn nuts doesn't mean I'm going to go get you corn nuts. And he turns to one of the other guys, Carlos, and he says, are we going to keep taking this crap from her? And Carlos says, yeah, we are, and knocks the guy to the ground. Says, go get some corn nuts, man. And so he heads out to get some corn nuts. 
Lou is then at a convenience store. He's got a bunch of stuff on the counter and he's trying to pay by check. And the clerk is looking at his ID and he says, this is not you, man. This says you're like 5'6", 110 pounds or something. I don't remember. I didn't write that down. Obviously, this isn't you. How can I take this check from you? Well, unbeknownst to them, there's these three dudes in a car that were, they, they were heading to a bank. They were going to go pull a bank job or something. And the guy who's driving is like the mastermind. And suddenly he just something like pops into his head and he goes, you know what? I think we're going to do something different. And he plows the car into this convenience store. And he jumps out of the car and he jumps up onto the hood and he points his gun at the clerk and he's like, fill this bag full of money. And the clerk's like, "Uh, okay, I can do that. But there's probably only about 80 bucks in the register. And the guy says, fine, give me all your sugarless gum as well. And one of the other dudes that was in the car He sees Lou laying there on the floor and just starts picking a fight with him. He's like, what do you think this is funny? You think what's going on here is funny? I'll show you funny. And he just empties. He's got a machine gun and he empties it into Lou, just fires the full clip. And when the smoke clears, Lou's like, ow, none of the bullets broke his skin. It's like, what are you trying to do? Kill me? And the thug's like, well, maybe. And then that's when Lou just, that's, Lou just gets angry at that point. And he, he, you know. Using his super strength, he beats them all up and he throws them out the store. And the clerk was like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. You saved my life. You're one of those superhero guys. And Lou's like, hey, that's right. I did save your life. Maybe that'll get me some free uh, cocoa cupcake thing. I don't remember the name of the, of the you know, like uh, Ding Dongs or something. They were like cuckoo creams or some kind of snack cake. And the clerk right away just gets angry. Oh, already trying to cash in on your fame, are you? Get out of my store. And so then Lou goes home and he's this big dude in his little car and he gets home and waiting for him at home, standing out front of the apartment complex are these four very strange looking individuals. They've obviously been waiting there for him. One is an old lady. Her name is Lauren. We find out that each one of these people have superpowers. Lauren, the old lady, she can see into the future. Francis, never Frank. Dutton has a sonic scream. Val, she flies. And then there's the other dude who just calls himself the Gecko. And he's in some kind of weird Gecko type costume and he sticks to walls. And so they're telling Lou, we've been waiting for you. We were, we were drawn to this place. We knew that you were the one we had to meet. Over the past few weeks, we have all been granted these superpowers and we want to use them to do right. And we've all been dreaming of you. It's like the Gecko has this, he shows him this jar of peanut butter in which he has sculpted Lou out of peanut butter. The old lady, Lauren, she had a premonition and she made a quilt with Lou's image on it. And at one point, Francis shows him, they're all basically showing him their superpowers. And Val shows that she can fly and and Lou thinks that's pretty cool. Francis shows him his sonic scream, which gets out of control and busts all the windows in Lou's car, which really makes Lou mad. And the gecko says, we've been here for, we're waiting for you. You're going to be our leader. And Lou is just like, would you guys get off my lawn? Get out of here. Leader, you guys are crazy. Beat it. I'm not going to be anybody's leader, you bunch of freaking weirdos. The only thing I expect to happen at this point is the dude with the long hair, which is Francis. You're going to come back and give me 260 bucks for my windows. Then he lets himself into the apartment. And sitting there on his couch playing video games are these two green alien looking dudes. Actually, one of them, I think, is playing video games. The other one is eating cereal. And the one playing video games, or or, I don't remember which one, but one of them looks at him and goes, hi. And that's how the issue ends. Now, this did bring back a bunch of memories. I am sure that I'm going to talk about the remaining issues as I go along. But from what I recall, these aliens were doing some kind of science experiment. Like Like they're high school kids, right? And they're doing this science experiment. And it's all about getting these random humans superpowers and seeing what they'll do and so they sent this these rocks or something they'll explain it later and this is all just from my memory they sent this stuff to these people through the mail and when they opened up the package they got superpowers well the package that lou got actually wasn't supposed to go to him if you remember when he picked up the box he said ah they put my last name first that's weird it was actually supposed to go to a guy named martin lewis So he shouldn't have even gotten the superpowers, but he did. And from what I remember, he doesn't, you know, for example, Peter Parker, he gets his superpowers. His first thought is to try to make some money off of it. 
Lou doesn't even go that route. He just, they, they annoy him. He doesn't, he just wants to stay home and play video games and watch movies. He's a total slacker. And these aliens that did this, I, they, I believe these are the two aliens that are sitting there on, on his couch. Again, I don't remember finishing the entire series. I feel like this gang that we met earlier in the book with Bridget who wanted uh, Nunzio to go get her some corn nuts. I think they get powers too. And they become supervillains. I know that there are some supervillains that these aliens chose. There's some people that they chose to give powers to, knowing that they would become supervillains. And I feel like, at one point, one of the supervillains is like a, a dinosaur-looking dude. And he's a Nazi. And he calls himself Tyrannosaurus Reich, which is just a wonderful name. <laughs> it's just the funniest, funniest thing I've ever heard. But it's one of these books that I remember just really enjoying. And then I just kind of forgot about it. And I don't remember how it popped back into my mind the other day, but I was sitting on the couch and I don't know what I was reading comics at the time. And I don't know what I was reading that made me think of Major Bummer, but it suddenly just popped into my mind. And I thought, I wonder if that's on Comixology. And I took a look and there was this 15 issue trade that collects the whole series and it was on sale. That's what we call serendipitous, folks. And so, of course, I, I had I had to buy it. I had no choice. It popped into my head. Boom, there it was. Boom, it's on sale. How do you say no to that? I didn't. I bought it. And I'm glad I did. First ep- first issue down, memories flooding back. And Doug Monkey's art, oh my gosh. That dude can draw. And I feel like he's local for me. Matter of fact, if, if that's the dude I'm thinking of, and I'm pretty sure it is, I used to work with this dude at my second job. I'm not going to name names. I'm not, not going to name anything. But I used to work with this dude at my second job whose wife... I don't remember what she did, but she knew or knows Doug Monkey, and I don't remember how the connections are, but he and I were talking about it, and, and uh, so yeah, that's a couple degrees of separation, I guess, between me and Doug Monkey. If I'm even pronouncing his name correctly, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. But his art, love it. Love his art. He's definitely got a style. He's definitely one of those, if I pick up a Doug Monkey book and nobody tells me it's Doug Monkey, I'm pretty sure I usually can pick, oh, this is Doug Monkey. John Arcudi, I think he's, I think he, uh, I know he was involved in BPRD. Is that the right word? There's, is that the right letters? BPRD, the Hellboy spinoff. My friend Harold turned me onto this book called Rumble that I'm pretty sure John Arcudi is involved in. And I need to get back to that because I read the first trade and it was awesome. I don't remember who the artist was on Rumble. I, now that I have both a work phone and a personal phone, I can just look that up. Rumble, written by John R. Cootie and artist David Rubin, who is also a phenomenal artist. Anyway, I've obviously picked the wrong time to come out and record. Everybody and their mom is going to lunch right now, despite everything that we're reading about social distancing. And one of the things that you can do if you are working during this time is to bring your lunch to work to avoid having to go anywhere and be among other people. Nobody's nobody's doing any of this. And I I can't get up in arms about that because I'm about to go through a drive through So, you know, who am I to talk? But I also have a pocket full of Purell wipes, little packets. So let's just be safe out there, folks. Major bummer, number one, if you have an opportunity to pick this book up, I urge you to do it. If you find it anywhere at any comic book store and back issue bins, If you want to try to grab it on Comixology, I don't know if it's still on sale, but I urge you to do it. It is a lot of fun. Again, I wish I could tell you if they actually wrapped it up by issue 15, if if it does have some kind of closure, but I, I don't recall. I guess I'll find out as I continue to read. But until then, my name is Steven, and I'm just another fanboy. Be nice to each other. Stay safe. Don't get the bug. I'm out. Just Another Fanboy is a presentation of the Stephen or Else podcast. Questions and comments can be directed to feedback at stephenorelse.com. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash stephenrorr and get instant access to the My Other Podcast podcast, a weekly show about whatever crawls its way into my tiny little mind just moments before I tap record. You can find me on the World Wide Web at stephenorelse.com or find me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for at Stephen or Else. 
I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and share this episode with a friend. Just Another Fanboy is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. You can find that over at comicspodcasts.com. All links will be in the show notes. Good job.